The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Numbers chapter 11, verses 16 and 24 to 29, where Moses was inspired to write, The Lord said to Moses, Bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting that they may stand there with you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. My dear friends in Christ, when, oh, under those circumstances that Moses was disgruntled or dis, in feeling down and whatever because uh, the work of leading the children of Israel was so so much overwhelming him. Well, when God told him to select those 70 elders, we hear how God took some of the spirit from Moses, put it on them, and they prophesied. But while they were prophesying at the tabernacle, there were two elders, Eldad and Medad, who for some reason, they didn't gather together with the other elders around the tabernacle with Moses, but the Holy Spirit also came on them. They, they didn't participate in the commissioning ceremony there at the tabernacle, but the Holy Spirit came on them and they were prophesying in the camp amongst the people. And that did result in a bit of a disturbance in the camp so that there was a, a young man who ran to Moses to tell Moses about what was going on. And at that young man's report, what, Mo, what Joshua did, well, Joshua, he had been Moses' loyal aide since he was a young boy. He spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. Loyal Moses saw Eldad and Medad as, as what they were doing as an attempt to challenge Moses' authority. Joshua's jealousy Actually, it's very similar to the jealousy that the disciples exhibited in Sunday's Gospel reading. In Sunday's Gospel reading, the disciples had heard about how there was a man who was casting out demons in Jesus' name, but he wasn't officially authorized by Jesus to do that work. As Jesus ended up reproving the disciples, so also Joshua here was reproved by Moses. Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? Moses wanted Joshua to be jealous of the Lord and his work, but he didn't want Joshua to be jealous of honor and position for Moses. It wasn't about Moses, it was about God and Moses here exhibits the attitude of a true servant of God in that, in that he desires glory for God above all else, not for himself. And we can be reminded of, well, in Moses' attitude, we can be reminded of similar attitudes that were expressed, for example, by John the Baptist. When Jesus came, he said that he, John, needed to decrease while Jesus increased. Or think of the Apostle Paul. When he looked at himself, he, he didn't think of himself as being this great one. He 
He said of himself that he was the least of the apostles. Such humbleness in the face of the Lord's honor and work is proper and fitting because as the psalmist says, unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor in vain. The Lord, he's the one that's responsible for the growth of his church and Moses, Joshua, Eldad, Medad, the 70 elders, any Christians, we just have the wonderful privilege of being tools that God wants to use to build up his church. Well, Moses said, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. God's people rejoice in his Holy Spirit freely given. It's a wonderful thing when anyone is made a believing child of God. Moses, he didn't feel threatened or jealous because of those Eldad and Medad prophesying or the others of the 70 who were prophesying. If he'd been jealous or felt threatened, he'd kind of be like the pastor who said, I'm the only one around here who's supposed to be sharing the word of God with anybody else. You all keep your mouth shut. And well, you've never heard me say that. Heard me maybe say, I wish all of you were faithfully witnessing to others about the grace and love of God. Oh, how many more people could be reached if, if all of us were doing that? Well, Moses here, he rejoiced that God had freely given his Holy Spirit to those elders. He, he wanted all believers to be prophets people who tell their friends, their family, their neighbors, their acquaintances, everyone about the Savior. Moses' statement here is also a prayer for, for us today. A prayer for us today, wanting all believers to be messengers of the gospel. But a, a crucial thing here, of course, is yes, we want everybody to be a messenger of the gospel, but it's, it's crucial that they all be faithful witnesses to God in his word, not proclaiming error or human opinion as opposed to the truth of God, always proclaiming the truth of God. And isn't that our desire as well? Don't we as God's people rejoice when God's spirit is given to more and more people and they join us and all true believers as witnesses for Christ. May God so fill us with the Holy Spirit that our desire is just like that of the Savior and well, like that of Moses as well. But our desire be like that of the Savior whose desire was that he doesn't want anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. So we too are prophesying, that is talking whenever we can, whenever, wherever the opportunity presents itself about our Savior and his grace and mercy and love to our family, our friends, our neighbors, acquaintances. Remember, God's people, you and I, we rejoice in the Holy Spirit freely given and we want everyone to know about our Savior and have that Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we live in our sinful, sin-troubled world, help us always to remember how blessed we are because of you, because you've given us Jesus, and because you've given us the Holy Spirit. So we believe in Jesus. Help us and everyone who has been filled with the Holy Spirit to be your faithful witnesses. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.